My name is John Miller. For those of you who don't know, I'm the president of the Public Speaking Club. And uh, let me show you what we got on for today. Okay. Um, we're actually going to get to some of these icebreakers a little bit later, after we uh, after I talk to you a little bit about some uh, some ten biggest public speaking mistakes. Uh, these are kind of interesting. I think you guys might find these pretty pretty entertaining. Some of you may have done some of them. I'm, I'm, I've certainly done some of them. So I'm going to run through those with you real quick. We pulled it up from uh, Toastmasters. And for those of you who don't know, Toastmasters is a international organization for, for public speaking and for leadership. So these guys know exactly what they're talking about. So the first thing, you guys can just kind of follow along with me, is, is starting with a whimper. Uh, this is kind of funny because I, I think a lot of times people... Uh, they don't. They don't have enough confidence when they get, when they start to speak, and so immediately you set a tone uh, for your speech that is is far uh, wimpier than you might like. And and I think setting that tone uh, incorrectly, improperly at the beginning can have a, a large negative effect on, on the rest of your speech. Secondly, attempting to imitate other speakers. Sometimes this is good when you think about like acting, for example. You want to act like a certain character. But in this scenario, when you're speaking, you want to be yourself. People don't want to go up there to hear someone else. They're there to hear you. Thirdly, failing to work the room. So one, this is a big challenge, is when you have an audience, it doesn't matter how big, you, you want to work the room, you want to be engaging, and you want to be interactive. If I sat up here and just talked to you guys and didn't look for feedback like we kind of did at the first meeting, it would be far less entertaining for all of you. So that's part of working the audience and then keeping them engaged throughout the entire presentation or, or talk. Failing to use relaxation uh, techniques. So whatever, you're, whatever you need to do to keep relaxed, you want to. Uh, I think it's, it's very easy to see when someone's nervous, whether it's fidgeting with a pencil, uh, you know, whether it's pacing too fast back and forth or kind of looking straight down. There's a lot of, there's a lot of signals that give off being nervous and you want to try to subdue those as best you can so that the audience knows that you're confident. And the next five, Anita is going to give for us. So, um, the next one is using someone else's stories. Most people, even for the impromptu speeches that we do here, we feel like, oh, nothing relates to us. We can't answer this question. We don't have anything interesting to say. But um, these tips suggest that if you don't have anything interesting to say, you're just not looking hard enough. Um, what about reading the speech? So if you're reading, um, oh, so one more that um, fell under John's first five was reading a speech word for word. So um, that could put them to sleep. They'd rather you just email it to them rather than them having to sit there. And so uh, that's really important. Don't just read it. Uh, if you have to like bold face keywords or anything in between, then that could help you always. Um, and look at the keyword to prompt your thoughts instead of reading it word for word and never even making eye contact. The other thing, um, speaking without passion, if you don't seem passionate about it, nobody else is going to believe you or want to listen to you or follow your guidance or directions or do what you say pretty much. Um, the next one is ending a speech with questions and answers. So you can always end with a Q&A session. That way you end on a higher note and you can address some of the issues people have and in the end either make a closing remark or just set out an action plan or a task that can get them started on something else right after, or you can end with a quote. Um, failing to prepare, so of course every time you get up here, people assume that you're prepared and you want to make sure you give off the best um, presentation. And then failing to recognize that speaking is an acquired skill. As you know, everybody is learning, we're learning right now as well, and you want to acquire that skill as best as possible and that's practicing as much as you can. Alright. Good deal. So those are the some of the 